Uh, good evening, guys. We are ready for the next session. The next session is Python and React Database, a perfect couple for huge scale distributed computing. The speaker for this session is Naren. Naren is a Dev DevOps engineer from Nolarity Communications, Bangalore. So I request Naren to kindly start with the session. Okay, let us start. Yes, this is the talk which I'm going to give, Python and React DB. How many of you heard about the React DB before? Please raise your hands. Have you used it before in your company or anywhere else? Just raise your hands if you used it before. Okay. So this is my talk. And why I'm concentrated on React DB this time is because of the problems we face in our company. And uh, this is me. I'm a DevOps engineer at Nolarity and a programmer in Python and JavaScript from past two years. And also, uh, many of you could have seen my blog, I am Pythonist. How many of you saw that? I am Pythonist. So let me ask you a few questions, or I want to take a few uh, ideas from you. Like, have you ever wondered that how Amazon is handling such a huge, huge traffic and how it's maintaining, how it's recording all the transactions every day? Yes. Have you seen any such organization equivalent to Amazon in handling such a big number of transaction list and all? There are few technologies which can handle equivalent to Amazon, but Amazon is doing that because of one technology. It's DynamoDB. It's the paper which is released by Amazon in 2007. Okay, so React. React is an open source implementation of DynamoDB. So it is capable of doing all the things that Amazon S3 can do. S see their characteristics. 100% uptime, infinite scale, 100% uptime is not possible in the reality, right? 100% nothing can be up. But we will talk in the sense of relative, relative position, saying that it's 100% uptime means there will be no downtime and all. Infinite scale is not possible, but we will say that scalability should be there and it should increase horizontally as we add new resources or nodes to it. And fault recovery, there should not, if any of the node in the cluster went down, you should be able to recover the entire cluster using the other nodes which are existing. And low latency. It sh latency means it's the delay which is experienced by the user. So low latency means the delay should be less so that customer user experience will be very good. So why we need to care the fault tolerance? Because Nowadays, even the two seconds and three seconds delay can cause the user to go to other website, like take Snapdeal and Flipkart. If Snapdeal lags, you will instantly open a new tab and you will go to Flipkart, yes or no? So Snapdeal is lost one customer. I'm taking it as an example. It may uh, be the case of Flipkart too. So that's, that's why you need to take care of fault tolerance. So you should never lose a customer, business customer. Many of the companies currently which are existing in Bangalore are startups. And uh, I, I don't think they've grown very big. But eventually, all the companies from startups will go into the final stage where they need to handle a lot of requests and a lot of users and a lot of traffic. And they should scale their data, their databases. So. At the time, even the loss of one second will cost you billions of dollars or millions of dollars, whatever it may be. Amazon will, Amazon will lose if they cannot provide the scalable solution for the customers. If any latency were there, then finished. Business will be, will went into a huge loss. So React, uh, I will come to Python in the second half because React is totally a different solution which is offered uh, I think you know about MySQL and NoSQL database solutions, right? So in NoSQL, we have many types of NoSQL databases like MongoDB, CouchDB, FoundationDB, Redis, and React. 
since many of you don't know about the React, what is the speciality, why we need to use it, because there are a lot of options available, why I should use React. So it's a NoSQL database. I will say use it for two main reasons, because it's built on Erlang. How many of you programmed in Erlang? Here. Please raise your hands. Oh, it's, uh, Erlang is a functional programming language. This is not Erlang con, so I cannot extend it, but Erlang is the thing which is powering the WhatsApp. So this is built on Erlang. Erlang in the sense, there will be actors and concurrent programming in which uh, everything is fault recovery. Like one process, even though if it dies, it won't crash the system, it is independent. Uh, all the pro process will communicate with each other using the messages. They, there won't be shared resources and all. So obviously there will not be crash even though one process dies. So React DB is built on Erlang. So it will be robust. I, if you take MongoDB, it is on C++. And if you take Cassandra, it is on Java. So the second point I told you in the beginning that it's the open source implementation of DynamoDB. Dynamo has a specific architecture and uh, how it process the clustering, how it maintain the different nodes, virtual nodes, is the main thing we are going to discuss here. And in Dynamo paper, the architecture which they mentioned is not master-slave like MongoDB. You, many of you have heard about sharding in MongoDB when you want to scale it up, yes or no? Sharding, sharding is the process where you uh, scale. So in DynamoDB, there is no master-slave architecture, everything is peer to peer. Like all the guys in the nodes are equal and they will know all other nodes. So there is no single point of failure saying that in MongoDB if master is failed, then everything is lost. But in Dynamo, everybody is a master, so everybody can see all the things. So if you use React, the main advantage as a DevOps engineer you will get is th there will be no 2 p.m. calls. 2 a.m., sorry. 2 a.m. calls will not be there. There is 2 p.m. Because even though one node fails, the other node will come to save your life and it will process the request. So how many of you work with distributed databases? Just raise your hands. So what are the two main characteristics in the distributed databases is like replication and partition. You know the meaning of replication, right? You have one set of data and you want to take a copy of it, backup, exactly clone of it. It is called as the replication. And partition means cut it into half and place one half in one container and another one in the another place. It is called the partition. But what are the uses of by seeing the picture, you will come to know there are, those are country names from A to Z. We are doing replication there. Means all the country names from A to Z, we are storing them in node B also. Node B, nodes are like systems, virtual nodes or servers, we can call them. So we are copying them into node B. But what's the main disadvantage here? We can copy everything. We can keep 10, 100 backups in case of data failure. But what's the main problem with this replication? Capacity, we need to have a lot of capacity and wastage of memory will be happening always. Because we are taking unwanted backups, right? But we need to think how we can come up with a solution which returns us the data at the time of failure of node, but it should not be the replication. And there is one more technique, as I told you, is partition. So in partition, we will cut it into two parts and keep half of it in node A and half of it in node B. But what is the advantage here? Space. We are utilizing all the space to fill entire data. But what's the disadvantage? If node B went down, we are out. Like, we will get a 2, 2 a.m. call. So when we talk about distributed databases and scalability and all these things, there will be one demon coming into our way. It is called CAP theorem. How many of you heard CAP theorem? 
So cap theorem states that at the time of network partition, network partition means you have four nodes and four are connected to internet and they are clustered, okay? So let us think network plug, network plug is unplugged from node C. Then node C cannot contact with the other guys because internet is down, right? So it is called the network partition. So at the time of network partition, you can have only two things. One is availability or other one is consistency. I will tell you why only two things can be there. Let us take an example, like we have a database and there is a network partition. Take node C and you have some data in node C. And at the same time, one guy is trying to write to node D and the other guy is reading from node C which do not know about the other nodes. So it will return the old value, yes or no, at the time of partition. But if you want to stop that, you need to log the database, yes or no? You need to log the database saying that, sorry, one node is in the failure, so let us uh, repair it first and then you can write it. But here availability is not there, yes or no? So similarly, if you, if you leave him write, he will write that value to a dead node that is not available to the other nodes, so other people will see the different values. Here consistency is lost, if you allow him. So if avail availability is there, then there will be no consistency, and if consistency is there, availability will not be there and vice versa. So how you can overcome that? React has a very good feature which enables you to set the level of consistency and availability. Like, they both are not opposite, but you can set the levels of consistency and availability using React. See, this is what I told about, level of availability and level of consistency can be set using React. So how React does that? React has a strategy called NRW. N means number of nodes to replicate the data. R means how many nodes it should be, the data which is given by the customer should be written so that we should treat it as a successful read. R means. Write means, it's obvious, like how many nodes you need to write in order to make it a successful write. By seeing this picture, you will come to know perfectly. See, there we have node A, uh, node C, right? So if we, there, there are five nodes in our cluster. And we are saying n equals to three. It means just replicate this data to three nodes out of five. So that if anything is lost, a node E is failed, then I can get it from node C and node D. W equals to two means write this thing to at least two objects to confirm it is a successful write. And read, read at least two nodes. You can say that you can read from node C and give to the customer, saying that this is the thing. But in React, we can set from the program itself how many nodes I can read. So that if you set n equals to two, it is like confirming, okay, uh, this read is perfectly read from two servers. So it, it might be consistent. If you say n equals, uh, r equals to three, it will read from all three replicated servers and say, yes, this is the correct data because we read from all three servers. That's how you can set availability and consistency values in the React DB. Mainly, it's consistency. So how uh, React stores the things in the database is depicted in this picture. It's it's very beautiful one. Like. Uh, I told you, uh, React is masterless, means all are masters in React. Not like MongoDB, there, there is no master here, all are equal. This is actually a virtual ring. This is not physical, this is a virtual ring in which we have all the nodes. And all the nodes know what is happening in the other nodes. That is called the ring state. This is actually a algorithmic ring how React stores data in the database is like, when you give data to React, it will hash it using SHA-1 algorithm, and it will get some hash value, right? So that hash value is used to insert data in this ring. So, so let us take the key called favorite, and uh, hash it, you will get some value. That value is used to uh, insert that favorite key at the place three, okay? means here, three. These A, B, C, D, E are physical nodes, like my laptop is one node, his laptop is another, his laptop is another. 
So there are five nodes, five nodes. And uh, what all, these things are called virtual nodes. Each node, I mean each system will be divided into virtual nodes. So React will allocate those virtual nodes to each node using Shavan algorithm, that's the case. So one, two, three, four, five, it will allocate all 64 virtual nodes in this manner for a five node configuration, okay? So when we say n equals to three, by default for a five node cluster, n equals to three means replicate to three nodes. So let us think favorite key is stored in three, three. So it will be replicated to four and five. But here, what are the physical nodes? A, B, C, D, E are physical nodes. So if D and E fails, you will get value from C, yes or no? This is called the partitioning, which we saw before. We cut down half of the country list and put another half into another, right? So this is the partitioning, how React partitions the virtual nodes in different nodes, physical nodes. These all are physical nodes and these all are virtual nodes. So React does that. And it will replicate, but, but when we see the ring, three, four, five are very adjacent, right? Three, four, five are adjacent. But when we see physically, these things are in different machines or different nodes, different physical nodes. So even though D fails, E will give the request. And also people will think that how to uh, add a node to the cluster, how to remove, because f first thing you have 400 requests or something. Uh, next you got 2,000 requests. So you need to add five more nodes in order to satisfy those 2,000 requests, right? It is called horizontal scaling. So people will think if you are using a database, then it will, it will be a very tough and complex job to add nodes to a cluster and remove it. But in React, it's very simple. You will have a command called uh, React Admin. So using React Admin, you can do all the things like add a node, remove a node, replace it, destroy it, you can do anything. So cluster join React at the rate of 127.0.0.1. So that is the machine name, like uh, let us take my node. So if you say cluster join node name, it will join to the cluster, that's it. And if you say leave, it is like we are removing a node from the cluster with a single command. With a single command, we can do that. And if, if some node is failed and we need to replace it because that node is failed, uh, due to hardware failure or network. Then we can do it using cluster replace node one and node two. Those two are what machine names, like IP address. So you can also get the cluster status using those commands. It's very simple, with a one line you can do that. And you heard of ACID, right? In the database, ACID. Uh, when you are dealing with MySQL or rel relational databases, you will see the ACID, atomic, durable, and all those things. So React is base. Base is the common terminology we are using in the distributed databases, saying that it should be available. B means basically available. It should be available to the customer all the time. Soft state means the state of the data should be preserved. And eventually consistent means the last write should win. Like those who, like we will call it as transactions in relational databases, right? So similar to that. Durable means it should be there. The data should be perfectly written to the database because we can have durable writes or not. That is our choice in React. Like if it is not durable, the request for writing the data will go through the node, but it won't acknowledge. But if you mention that it, it is a durable write, then that process will sit there. And after successfully the thing is written to the disk, then it will come back and say, yes, it is durable write. So React is durable. You, you can set a write durable or not in the request itself. That's the, React has full customization, like you can set all the levels which you want according to the customer uh, experience. So now I came to Python. Actually at Nolarity, I'm working the Nolarity, right? Uh, we are a cloud telephony company. So we use Python a lot. We use Python as our uh, main programming language to build all the systems there. So you are seeing uh, coding in Python is very fun and it's also very simple language. And there are many reasons to pick up the Python. Actually, I'm not picking up Python uh, as using React as the database, but we are using Py Python uh, 
and we want to scale. We want to scale because we need to handle like lakhs of phone calls every hour. So uh, we are in that direction moving towards React slowly. So uh, I'm sharing my experience with you. Our mainstream is in Python. We are using Django uh, as our backend. So this is what uh, we all know. Because of its expressive power, with short lines of code, you can do uh, wonderful things. And because of its simplicity and a uh, lot of libraries are available to do anything. Uh, in single word, we can say this. So now you, you might have a question for me, like uh, does you have a Python client, you are talking about React and also Python. Uh, there is a driver which connects both of these. You can ask me. Yes, there is a very good Python client, which is uh, written already like uh, two to three years back, and it is matured. So this is the short snippet I'm showing you how to uh, insert data, how to connect to a node, and how to insert data instantly. See there, uh, I'm, re I'm importing the React client, import React, and creating the React client, creating the bucket, have you heard about bucket? How many of you uh, worked with S3? Many of you, I think, right? So bucket is not a new term to you, but let me explain. Uh, here, data is not stored as the table and row. Here, data is stored as the bucket key and vol value, OK? Bucket is the namespace which is used to hold the keys. Key is the identity using which you will fetch the value. So think it as a bucket. In bucket, you will have keys and value pairs. Using key, you can fetch the data. And using key, you can insert data. So I'm creating a bucket. Let us crea create a bucket. And in that bucket, I'm creating a new key called Python developer 1. And I'm inserting my data there. And when I say store, it will get stored. That's it. With, with five lines, you got a, your, your data is stored in the database, right? So this is what I'm talking about, React Client, Bucket, New, and Store. These are the methods I'm talking about which are used to insert the data. OK? But React Client, we saw the normal version. You might, you might be wondering, where is the clustering? Where are the nodes? Where are uh, the scalability things you talked about till now? You are showing just one node and saying that I'm inserting data into that. Where are the nodes? And where is the cluster? So let us see about it. These are the other two methods used to fetch a bucket and a value from it. By seeing that code, you will get, we are creating a client and connecting to the database. If you, if you give nothing, like React client with no arguments means it's in the local host. That is same for all other uh, database clients like MongoDB and all. So bucket equals to client dot bucket of developers and Narend equals to user bucket dot get Python developer one, and I'm getting the data out of it. Using get data, you will get the data from the object which is written for a key. So this is what I'm speaking about before. You just told React client, and you just connected to the local machine. How you can say it will work on cluster or multiple nodes? How, how we will connect to multiple nodes, multiple systems? So See the second one? Second one is for single node, like which is in the remote place. Like uh, it may be EC2 instance or something. You can connect to that EC2 instance using the address and port of that particular EC2. And third one is interesting. It's actually the thing which we want. There is an argument in the third form of React client. It is nodes. It's a dictionary which consists of the machine information, node information. Here, the node, this. This node is just the local host, right? This thing. This is one dictionary. So you can pass any number of dictionaries. Let us say we have five nodes called React 1, React 2, React 3, React 4, and 5. So you can add all those nodes in this React client uh, form. And when you say create client, it will create a cluster. It will connect to the entire cluster rather than connecting to a single node. So using with one statement, you can connect it. OK? OK, uh, in relational databases, how you will search 
on the multiple, like uh, when data is distributed on multiple systems, how you will search in all of them? How many of you implemented the open source search technology Lucene in your projects? Lucene or Solar, Apache Solar. Okay, so Solar is a open source technology. You can use it to implement your own search in your website or anywhere you want. And you can use it and it will search with lightning speed. As, uh, so this React uses the solar search as the backend to search things on the multiple systems which are uh, spreaded over the cluster. Like one node can be in Singapore, another node is in US West, another one is in US East. But you can call a query from a node and you can get results from all of the nodes. You can search in all the nodes using a single command in React. In relational databases, it's not possible and it's not that easy if, even though you are adding some add-ons or something. And React also have the map reduce architecture. Like, normally you do map reducing in order to aggregate and find the results from the uh, data which you stored in the database. It's not like, actually map reducing is taking code to data rather than taking, taking data to code and executing some results and fetching it. So React distributes the mapping part and also the reducing part equally to all the nodes so that they will execute them independently and send result to a uh, single node which aggregates them and redistributes the tasks. So even React has a very good map reduce architecture. But what we, what we are getting here uh, using React and Python. Python, it's easy to start for anyone, like uh, for all the other developers who are coming from the different domains, they can easily adopt to Python because it's easy, easy to learn and uh, easy to start. So it's a developer-friendly stack. React, uh, React has a very bad documentation exactly one year before, but uh, before one year exactly, React 2 was released. So at the time, they took they, they are more concentrated on the documentation. So now you can find a very good documentation on React in the Basho website. Basho is the company which created React, which implemented the open source version of Dynamo. Like, you know MongoDB, right? So Tenjin is the company which created, I mean, which built the MongoDB. So similarly, Basho Technologies is the company which built the React. So on their website, you can find a lot of uh, documentation for the Python client. So before that, let me show you a working demonstration of it. So uh, I'm trying to create a cluster in the Docker container. How many of you worked with Docker too? How many of you know Docker? Uh, have, you, have you created containers and uh, deployed something in that? created images and pushed it to cloud repository. So Docker is nothing but it simulates a virtual environment for you so that you can create a virtual environment and execute things in it. And Docker will assign a random IP to, to a container so that you can use it as a, you can use it as a virtual system. Because I don't have five systems here, right, which is connected through the LAN uh, to show the demo. So I'm creating five uh, nodes in the Docker and I will use them to connect. OK, I think there's some problem with this. OK. And you may ask where uh, we should not use the React. I can show you, but uh, uh, I think something happened to my Docker daemon. So I experimented with it in the morning. Uh, so where you should not use it? If you are a startup and you don't have much data to handle and you are not Scaling, you are not thinking about scaling for coming five years, then don't use it simply because uh, there will be more React haters than uh, who are going to get it. So if you are nostalgic about SQL and you, you don't want to leave it and come to NoSQL world, then you can use it. And mainly if you don't have any problem now, you uh, can skip using the React. Where you should use React? I told this as the first point, that your data is so critical and your customer need not wait even a single second to get the data or uh, write an operation. So if your business is like that, then you should use React compulsorily. 
Because even though one node fails, the other one will come to the rescue. Okay, you will get much more things. Uh, there is a very good book on React called React Book. And there are client libraries for majority of the programming languages, not only for the Python. And Python and ReactDB is a perfect couple, uh, in my opinion, because you can use Python to build websites very soon and React to scale it horizontally. So thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask. No. It's an open sourced one. Okay. Uh, you can fork it and you can use it as it is, but uh, there is an enterprise edition also in Basho. It has uh, many additional features, which is not required normally, but uh, they are required when your things are going out of hand. But for a big scale business, you can use the open source version and get what you want. Yeah, so if I'm going to scale up my database, yes. so then the entire scaling up thing is done by the, that company, or should I do it manually myself? No, no, I, I gave you commands to do that, right? Yeah. Just, just purchase OpenStack machines or any other thing, and just add those machines to the cluster. It will scale up automatically. It's not required. That's what I told. If you take databases like Cassandra and other things, if you want to scale it up, you need to follow a boilerplate procedure to do that. Is React really good for transactions? Uh, that's why I told it's eventually consistent. Yes, uh, there is a technique called vector clocks in React. It will track all the write operations and also read operations using a thing called vector clock. So this vector clock will be, it's a timestamp, which will be converted uh, in multiple geographies, multiple locations, on multiple nodes. And it will automatically transfer it into a single value, single relative value, and compare that. Uh, are there any benchmarks done to compare React with the other databases? Yes, there are, there are many benchmarks uh, in the web, and it's, it's almost equivalent to good with MongoDB, but one thing which really awesome about ReactDB is like, if you are going to add a node which is having more cores, then React will perform like a Superman because it's running on Erlang. Erlang can use all the four cores to execute the things. I accept Cassandra and React both are, came from Dynamo paper. They both are implemented from the Dynamo concept which is given by the Amazon. But if you take React, then if you currently the uh, systems with multiple cores is common, right? So if you add four core system, then React's power will be doubled, but not with the Cassandra. That's so uh, does that mean React performs better when more cores are added to React, or like no, no, no? Obviously, it performs better because I mean better than Mong say a MongoDB or it will do really better than uh, MongoDB. Thank you. If more cores are added, because okay. Erlang likes cores like anything. Okay, thanks. I have one question. Uh, yeah. Okay. This side. Where? How is? Okay. How is uh, concurrent uh, read and write uh, handled in uh, React? Because you have all those problems in. Uh, uh, in, in any distributed system, uh, this concurrent read and write problem will be there. So, that's what I told. At the time of concurrent write. At the time of concurrent write, React allows you to choose what to happen. Like, you need to take last write win strategy, or you need to create siblings. So that there is an option in React client. You, if you set that client uh, option, then the last write will win. It, like, if but if pe two people are doing, I told you the vector clock before, right? So it's concurrent means they are not going to do it in the same microsecond, which it's going to insert into the database, right? So there will be a time lag. So you can overwrite one value with the other at the time of concurrent. Uh, like you and I both are inserting same thing into the database. But for us, it may be 445 or 450. But for React, it will go into microsecond level, and there is a vector clock. It will check that vector clock. What is the exact time it's, it's going to hit the disk? According to that, it will overwrite or it will keep two records according to the option you specify.
there is an option called allow multiple nodes. If you set it as true, then it will create siblings. If you set it as false, then last right wins. It's according to your thing. There is no way to come around that situation. But you can keep siblings. You can uh, uh, remove the ambiguity there so that uh, data is not lost. Yeah, how about the reads at that time? It will be dirty, right? Because the write is happening. That's according to the <laughs> ratio or uh, the probability which we choose, uh, the consistency or availability level. Actually, in React, there is one more good thing. Like For each request, you can set the uh, readability and writability levels, which I showed you before. The number of nodes, it should, it, it, it should be readed to get the data. And number of nodes, it is needed to uh, write it. So those things, you can make it per request. But in other databases, it, it needs to be set in some configuration file. Uh, and we need to restart it to modify. But here, and uh, it is done automatically in React. OK, are we having any more questions? Questions, anyone? You can ask. OK, I don't uh, think that any more questions are there. So I thank you all for coming today and attending PyCon. Uh, I hope to see you tomorrow also. And I thank Naren for such a wonderful session. Thank you, Naren. Thank you. Thank you, guys.